What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats as well as some excellent attachment combinations for every gun in Modern Warfare 2. And in today's episode, we're finally going to be moving into the shotgun category, and I'm going to start it off with the brand new one, which is the KV Broadside. And to start this off, I wanted to have a comparison with all of the other shotguns that are currently in the game to see what kind of one-shot kill ranges we have, as well as what kind of maximum damage ranges we have. And as we can see here, the KV Broadside does have the worst range potential, at least when it comes to one-shot and two-shot kill potential, out of all the shotguns in the game. It's also worth noting while reading this chart, the first damage range that I show there in red that has some dots in the background, that's the range at which you're almost guaranteed to get a one-shot kill, as long as you're hitting at least about three pellets or so. Anything beyond that, you will have to ensure that you're hitting as many pellets as possible. So this right here doesn't give the greatest impression of the KV Broadside, however, the big difference with this gun compared to the other shotguns is our rate of fire is significantly higher, so we can get those follow-up shots very quickly. And with this, our rate of fire is 210 rounds per minute, and this means we can get our second shot off within 286 milliseconds. Which, to be fair, that's not an incredibly fast time to kill by any means, but it's at least reasonable to get that follow-up shot in a lot of situations you find yourself in with this shotgun. Beyond that though, if it does take you three shots to kill, our time to kill is very slow at 572 milliseconds. Next up for base stats, a really important stat for shotguns is our hip fire spread, and as we can see here, unfortunately the KV has the worst hip fire spread tied with the Expedite 12 in the shotgun category, but that actually makes sense because these are both semi-autos. And then another very important characteristic I wanted to compare with the other shotguns is our hip fire spread versus our aim down sight spread while actually firing at a target. And as we can see here, all of the shotguns will fire eight pellets per shot. And with all of them, if you aim down sight with the gun, it will tighten up the spread that you experience. Although it is to varying degrees, the Lockwood seems to get the best bonus out of all of these, but the KV broadside does get a very nice bonus by aiming down sight. And as a result, if you are stretching your range out a little bit and you want to ensure that you maximize the number of pellets that are hitting and minimize the number of shots to kill, it's often in your best interest to try to get aimed down sight. Obviously, right up close and personal though, you don't have to worry about this too much, just hip fire. Then when it comes to base stats, let's have a look at our handling stats. And our aim down sight time is quite slow, but it's actually average for shotguns at 350 milliseconds. Whereas our sprint to fire time is a little slower than average for shotguns at 182 milliseconds for our standard sprint out time and 296 milliseconds for our tactical sprint out time. Then let's have a look at our reload add time, which is very solid for shotguns in this game at 2.02 seconds. The reason it is so fast compared to the other shotguns is it has a detachable box mag, whereas many of the other shotguns have a tubular magazine that you have to reload shell by shell. And then finally for the base stats of this gun before attachments, Let's have a look at our mobility stats, and our base movement speed with this is bang on average for shotguns at 4.68 meters per second. Our sprint speed's a bit above average for shotguns, and I mean even the average is really solid. This is 6.32 meters per second for the broadside. And then finally, our aim walking movement speed is also very impressive and well above average for shotguns at 3.14 meters per second. So the KB is great when it comes to mobility. And with that, that already covers it for the important base stats on this shotgun. However, when it comes to shotguns in this game, most of the interesting stuff happens with attachments. So let's start this off with the bolt attachments on the KV broadside. The first bolt attachment will reduce our rate of fire down to 188 rounds per minute. And the upside for that is you get improved recoil control, which is honestly not that important for shotguns. So this slows our time to kill down and I generally wouldn't recommend using it, whereas the second bolt attachment improves our rate of fire up to 249 rounds per minute. And the downside for this is a loss of recoil control, which again, isn't all that important for shotguns. And what this means is with that second bolt attachment, we actually noticeably improve our time to kill with a two or three shot kill. And as a result, I would highly recommend using this if you've got it unlocked. Next, let's have a look at the barrel attachments and how they impact our ranges on this shotgun. And there are eight different barrel attachments that you can use, which is insane. And here's the breakdown of the ranges. You guys can see it for yourself. Some of them actually increase our range to just a little bit beyond this chart. Keep in mind, those aren't infinite ranges. They're just like 35-ish meters for some of them. But overall, you can see quite a big variety in these barrels and how they impact our ranges. The best overall, though, is the final barrel, which is the ZLR Sport 8 barrel. Then after that, I wanted to look at the muzzle attachments that can impact our ranges and or our pellet spread, because both of those are very important stats for a shotgun. And when it comes to the suppressors, there are four different suppressors in the game that you can use, two of which will improve our range by 14%, which is a really nice boost. And then also in the muzzle section, we have our chokes, which are unique to shotguns in this game. 
And all of these, aside from the X10 full choke, will reduce our aim down sight pellet spread. And you can see, especially with the Bryson choke, that one massively improves our spread while aiming down sight, which is great for those longer range shots. And it's also excellent if you're using slug rounds because this aim down sight spread also applies to the slug, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And as a result, if you are using the slug attachment, I would definitely recommend using that Bryson choke to ensure the slug is landing as close as possible to your point of aim. Next up for attachments, I wanted to show all of the attachments that have an impact on your sprint out time, since that's an incredibly important stat for shotguns in particular. So let's have a look at all of the attachments that impact our sprint out time. Keep in mind this is based on hand testing and sprint out times can be a bit tricky to hand test. So there is some room for rounding error here. But as we can see, five of the laser attachments will have an impact on our sprint out time. The best out of all of them for this appears to be the EXF Solar Flare. Then for rear grips, we have the TrueTac grip, which reduces our sprint out time by 20%, which is a really nice improvement. Also, the VLK stockless stock, or I guess lack of stock, is going to give us the best improvement to our sprint out time at 25%. And then it's also worth noting, if you put a larger magazine attachment on there, it will slightly harm our sprint out time, but not by a very large margin. These mainly just slow down our movement speed. And with that, it's finally time to move into the unique ammo attachments on this, and they are very unique when it comes to shotguns. And with this, the first thing I want to talk about is Dragon's Breath. In the game's current state with this shotgun, Dragon's Breath is still completely broken. Because as you can see there, our practically guaranteed one-shot kill with that is equal to our one-shot kill potential without using Dragon's Breath. So it's way more consistent with those one-shot kills within that range. And then it's one-shot kill potential if you're hitting most, if not all, of your pellets will extend out to about eight and a half meters, which is incredible, especially for a semi-auto shotgun. Now the big downside with using Dragon's Breath though is it does reduce our hit potential. The maximum hit potential is now only about 21 meters, whereas previously it's about 26 and a half meters. But typically you wouldn't be stretching your ranges out that much anyway with a shotgun. And as a result for the maximum consistency, Dragon's Breath is 100% the way to go with this shotgun, at least for now. I definitely expect this will get nerfed at some point in the not too distant future because it currently is way too powerful. But that's how Dragon's Breath works. It's also worth noting that in the game's current state, at least in custom games based on my testing, Blast Shield doesn't actually do anything to counter this. You will see a hit marker if you shoot a Blast Shield player, but they still die just like anybody that's not using Blast Shield. After that though, let's have a look at the slug attachment and our range potential with this. And as we can see here, we now have different body multipliers that we have to focus on. And our one shot kill potential to the torso will extend to about five and a half meters. However, if we can hit the upper torso, neck, or head, that one-shot kill potential will extend out to about 16 meters. So that's a pretty impressive range, but it does require accuracy. You're not going to be wanting to hit fire that. You have to get aim down sight and on target. And again, it is worth noting, with shotgun slugs, they don't necessarily go exactly where you're aiming when you fire them. There is a little bit of randomness with that shot. But if you use that Bryson choke, it will tighten this up quite nicely and you should still be fairly accurate within the ranges that you'll likely want to be using a slug. It is also worth noting, if you use a slug, you can now hit targets at any range, but you'll be dealing very, very little damage when you get beyond like 25 meters, for instance. But in the case of the KV broadside, you can actually use slugs fairly effectively, especially if you're confident with hitting those torso or upper torso shots. But even with a two shot kill, it's fairly consistent and easy to use. And then finally, for our ammo on this shotgun, we can also use explosive slugs. So this takes all of the existing properties of the standard slug, like the infinite hit potential and the fact that it's not perfectly accurate when you pull the trigger. But on top of this, we get an extra amount of explosive damage. And against a non-blast shield player, at least, this explosive damage will nicely boost our range here as well. Our new upper torso one-shot kill potential is now about 22 meters, which is really solid. And even our torso one-shot kill potential is 8 meters, which again, not too bad at all. However, there is a massive downside with explosive slugs, and this is they're effectively nullified by anybody that uses Blast Shield. It's impossible to get a one-shot kill on a full health enemy that's using Blast Shield with these explosive slugs, even with a point-blank headshot. And therefore, all it takes is running into one guy using Blast Shield to completely throw you off for a game. And as a result, I would say stay far away from explosive slugs. You'll find much better consistency overall if you just use these standard slugs. And with that, we can finally get into some excellent attachment combinations with the KV Broadside. And the first one I'm going to share for you is my overpowered build. And the main thing that will make this overpowered is the Dragon's Breath ammunition. 
But on top of that, we've got the ZLR Sport 8 barrel for the maximum range increase. The 12 shell magazine, I know some people like using 25, I just feel like it slows down movement speed way too much, so I stick with the 12 shell. Then we've got the Dashbolt 60 bolt, so we get that faster rate of fire. And finally, the VLK stockless stock to improve our sprint out time, movement speed, and aim down sight speed. And with this particular build, our consistent one-shot kill range where it's almost guaranteed to be a one-shot kill, even if you're just barely on target, this is going to be 5 meters, which is excellent for a semi-auto shotgun. And our one-shot kill potential, if we get aim down sight and we're ensuring we hit all our pellets, this is 12 meters, which is pretty incredible for the rate of fire of this gun. And overall, I do consider this to be the best shotgun build in the entire game right now. And I do anticipate that Dragon's Breath ammunition is going to catch a nerf for the KV broadside. So feel free to use this while it lasts, but it probably won't last. And as a result, for the second setup I'm going to share for you guys, this is a good consistent all-arounder that I would use if Dragon's Breath ends up getting nerfed into the ground. So to be clear, this isn't going to be nearly as good as a previous setup. And it is more of a backup that I wanted to provide in this gun guide. So with this, we're using the SAMX muzzle, which gives us a really nice range boost. And we also get the effect of a suppressor with this, which is excellent. We once again have that 12 shell magazine, the Dashbolt 60 bolt, and the VLK stockless stock. And the only other difference here is we're using the TrueTac grip to improve our sprint out time even more. And with this, we do get an excellent sprint out time at about 150 milliseconds. And our tactical sprint out time is only about 217 milliseconds. Once again, our rate of fire is boosted, which means our two shot time to kill potential is pretty solid at 241 milliseconds. Also, our consistent one shot kill range where you just have to hit fire, you don't have to worry about landing every pellet. This is three and a half meters, whereas our one shot kill potential is only four meters. And what that means is you don't have to worry about ever trying to get aim down sight with this setup. You should just be hip firing all the time and you'll be just as consistent with hip fire as you would be with aim down sight. So that's excellent. Just get yourself within three and a half meters and you're basically guaranteed a one shot kill. But even if you don't get a one shot kill, our two shot kill potential extends out to 16 meters, which is excellent. And you're still getting a great time to kill in this case, especially when you consider the fact that you don't have to get aim down sight first, unlike most other guns in the game where you do have to factor that aim down sight time in. So like I said, this is just an excellent all arounder for if slash when the Dragon's Breath ammo gets nerfed. I think this is actually balanced quite well as well. I don't think this is overpowered by any means. It just fits nicely into the meta. And then finally, I'm going to share a slug build for you guys. I don't necessarily recommend slugs, but if you want to give it a shot, this is the build that I would use for slugs. The biggest key here is making sure that you use that Bryson choke muzzle. This is the one that's going to make sure that the slug is actually landing fairly close to where you're aiming, because without that, it's going to be a guessing game beyond about 15 meters. Aside from that, there's really not much else to say. I've got the VLK Laser 7 Milliwatt to help with aim down sight time and aiming stability. We've got the Slimline Pro Optic on there so we can see our target a little bit better and get an accurate shot off, and the ZLR Sport for the maximum range boost. And with that, that's finally going to wrap it up for today's gun guide on the brand new KV Broadside Shotgun. As for my thoughts on this, like I've said throughout the video, I think it is a little bit overpowered with Dragon's Breath ammo in its current state, and I do anticipate that'll get a nerf. Outside of that, I actually think this shotgun is balanced very well. It fits into the meta nicely. I think they really did a good job of handling the one-shot kill potential. Combined with the rate of fire, I don't think it's way too good or anything without Dragon's Breath, of course. And therefore, I think it will end up being in a good place once Dragon's Breath inevitably gets nerfed. Now, of course, that is just my opinion of the KV Broadside, and I'd love to hear what you guys think about this shotgun in the comments down below. And also, if you guys have missed any of the previous episodes of Gun Guides, I will leave a link to the playlist in the description of the video. If you enjoyed this one, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.